There is obviously a lot of things that I love about Elite Dangerous, but the game has its shortcoming and there is also a lot of things that I absolutely hate about the game. Today's video is brought to you by Game Glass. With Game Glass, you can take control of your ship using a tablet or a phone. You can try it out using some of the free pre-made shots, or you can also make your own custom shots and share them with the community through the built-in marketplace. So gone are the days where you have no more room for all your key bindings. On top of that, Game Glass also supports Star Citizen, so follow the link in the video description and try Game Glass for free, and use offer code DTEA to get 5% off any purchase. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this video is the continuation of my recent video where I talked about five things that I love about Elite. So today we're gonna go to the other side of the coin, we're gonna flip it around and we're gonna talk about five things that I hate about the game. And we're gonna start with Odyssey. I don't necessarily hate Odyssey as an update, Odyssey brought a lot of good things to Elite, but it's still here more than a year, like year and a half now, almost approaching two years after its original release. Odyssey still feels disconnected from the rest of Elite. The all the on foot stuff seems like it was stitched on. It wasn't weaved into the to the gameplay as well as it could have been. Odyssey feels like a game within the game. And despite Frontier's best effort to like do the sphere of combat and making ships fly over uh, on foot combat things so you can see the ships fighting above and you're fighting on the ground it's still just two separate conflict zones it feels like these two separate conflict zones that just happen to be next to each other there is very little interaction between the on foot combat and the space side of combat i think a lot of it has to do with the fact that you have that break that transition when you move in and out of ships fake to black and then now you're in the new game i think it would make it make the game feel a lot more natural if frontier has made some minimum amount of walking in and out of um of the ships i'm not talking full ship interiors here i know that's a huge undertaking but at least allow us to just walk up a ramp and then take an elevator into the cockpit and then walk from the elevator and sit in the chair. That alone would have given so much more connection, I feel, between the on foot and the, and, the, um, and the ship base because you are on foot inside the ship, even though it is just a cockpit. The next thing that I hate about the game is the abandoned or dead features, things that's been added to the game and then just not iterated upon. It's just, there's so much lost potential here, and it happens over and over again. It seems like Frontier has this checklist of things they need to do, and once they do it, they move on to something else. They don't go back, they don't iterate much on existing things in the game, not as much as I would have liked, at least. Just to give you an example, the last time we saw a new ship in the game was when they introduced the Mamba in 2018. 18. We are writing 2023 now. I know it was December 2018, so so it's only four years. The game is eight years old. This is half Elite's lifetime since we have seen a new ship introduced into the game. The closest thing we've seen to a new ship was the Scorpion, the new SRV that was added. But other than that, we haven't seen any new ships. Same with Odyssey. Again, as I said, we're we're. A year and a half after launch, there's been no new armor, there's been no new weapons, there's been nothing extra added to, to Odyssey in terms of, of new engineer modifications, new types of weapons, new anything. It's just there. Power plays often comes up, it's a feature that has been added at the very, very early stages of the game and has since pretty much been abandoned. Nothing has happened with power play. It's almost a dead feature. I know there are dedicated power play players out there, but they're few and far between. So I just wish that sometimes instead of taking boxes with things they want to add, that it would go back and say, hey, let's look at the things that are already there and let's expand upon it. I mean, Frontier have a tendency to do overhauls where they change game mechanics. And I like that, keep doing that. But maybe also expand upon things, add more ships, add more weaponry, add new engineers, add new type of modules we can engineer, give us more stuff to play with. People are hungry for it and would love to see something also maybe not Thargoid related. This is probably one of the biggest critique points that I see iterated over and over again as people just get sick and tired of the hardcore grind that you see in Elite. 
While Elite does have uh, often many different ways that you can skin a cat, like if you want to go make money, well, there's lots of ways to do so. Maybe you want to get some reputation, or you want to unlock, unlock some engineers, get materials for engineers. Well, there's a lot of ways you can do so, but there will always be one way that is just the fastest way to do it. And it's often so much faster than any other method that there's no point in doing any other methods if you're trying to achieve a certain thing because it's just going to take two, three, four times as long as if you were doing that one method that works for whatever it is you're trying to do. And sometimes it also feels like Frontier goes out of their way to make the game more grindy. <laughs> I mean, it, it, Frontier has been criticized a lot for confusing gameplay and grind being the same thing, which they are not. A good example of this could be all these new pre-engineered modules, like in the past when we had all these special modules which we get at the tech broker. It would be an unlock. You go, you collect materials, you hand over materials, you unlock them, now you have access to them in the outfitting menu. Great! Most of the modules we get now are pay materials to gain one, and then you pay again to gain another, and another, and another, and another, and it keeps going on like that, where you have to pay materials for them. And, and there's very little consistency between this, this is all just mangled up where some of it is unlocked and some of it is pay per module, and, and it's not really intuitive in the UI, which is which, and it's just become a huge mess right now with all that. So sometimes I wish Elite would have more focus on not having to repeat the same tasks over and over and over again, but trying to invite people maybe to go to get, to find those gameplay loops they find enjoyable, and then make those gameplay loops rewarding. Now the fourth thing on my list of things that I hate about Elite is some of the poor decisions Frontier made about the game when they designed it back, uh, well, in the very, very beginning, before the game was even released. There is a lot of things in the game that Frontier has tried to change, or obviously want to change, but can't. It's just not possible. One of them is the 32 button limit. Um, in case you don't know, Elite Dangerous only supports up to 32 buttons per device. That means if you have a, a joystick or you have a throttle, if that thing has more than 32 buttons, you have to have some software thingy 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 running at the back that splits it up into two virtual devices in order for you to get access to it. It's just annoying. And it's, we know the Frontier has been investigating this. They had this after Odyssey, they has this prioritized list of um, of, of, of issues that they want to resolve. I think this was, was at the top at some point, but it was very high on the list of things that, that people have voted for to Frontier to go and fix. It never was. They weren't able to do it. And that means that they have made some decisions in the very, very early days, and the way that that has been implemented do not allow them to go back and make a change to that part of the code because it's probably just too much, I don't know, built in, like hard coded into the game. I don't know how they done it, but at least it seems to be too big of a task. It's kind of the same story with hot colors. While I haven't really seen any official statements regarding why Frontier is not allowing us to change the color of the hot without doing the whole little color matrix things, which is not really an official support way of doing it, I'm pretty sure that Frontier knows that people want to be able to change their hot color and that people will be, be willing to pay to be able to change the hot color. So the fact that Frontier is not selling hot colors as a cosmetic item in the ARC store, the same way they sell bobblehead and string lights and all that stuff, tells me that they're just not able to. Because they've made some kind of decision when the game was designed that does not allow them to easily go in and change the color of the hot in a, in a nice manner. Even though there has been a community-made mods out there that were able to do it somehow, now the last thing that I really don't like about Elite is the fact that there is very little in-game community. All the community stuff is out of game. And it's good out of game. There's a lot of good communities outside of the game, going in sites, a lot of good ways to engage with the Elite Dangerous community. In-game, it is appallingly poor. Like, yes, we got squadrons, which is a joke to be honest. Squadrons is nothing more than a name tag that you put on it. 
There are in-game factions that you can go and pledge to, but you can have an in-game faction without having a squadron. Squadrons kind of lost their entire purpose when fleet carriers were made into personal fleet carriers. The original plan, and here's a history lesson, the original plan with fleet carriers were that they were supposed to be a squadron thing, something that a squadron goes, as a project go, build a fleet carrier, and was owned by a group of people and not by an individual. That received a lot of backlash from the community. That was not what the community wanted. So there was moved, so the fleet carriers moved over to be personal fleet carriers, but that meant that the squadrons now lost their only purpose. And the squadrons today have very little purpose in the game. Now, other than squadrons, yeah, we have like a system chat, and I've seen people use that where they chit chat there, and there is a bit of sense of, of, of community there. When was the last time that you randomly tried to, to to like wing up with someone that you met in game that you didn't talk to out of game first. I mean, maybe you've done some multi-crew with random peoples at some point, but that's probably the closest you get to it. So I really wish there were more ways to engage with other players in the community, more ways to connect with other players that didn't involve somebody deploying hard points first. I think it would be relatively easy to go and look at other games. It doesn't have to be space games or any games that has clans or guilds or whatever you call them in, in whatever game and, and look at what kind of features are they using there. Like you can look at, at EVE Online for instance where you have corporations and this is a hugely popular implementation that they've done there where you have common storage, you have a common wallet that you can use to buy things for this, uh, for, for squadron maybe, so you could, I don't know, have like a tritium storage in your squadron where people go and mine and then dump tritium and you can use that to, if you want to do like some some communities and something inside your squadron with moving some carriers around. There would be so many things that you could allow to do with the squadrons, but again, as we talked about, squadrons is right now another dead feature that has been abandoned and probably won't see any kind of love or attention. Now I know this video was probably a little bit more negative and salty than my usual stuff, so if you're feeling a little down, go and watch the video about five things that I love about Italy. Dangerous, so get your mood back up. But that's good for today, thanks a lot for watching and until next time, I will see you guys in space.